our project this week is a jewelry box. It's got a top that lifts up that has a mirror in it. Both sides open up to reveal where you can hang jewelry. It also has a lot of drawers. What it also has in these drawers is lots of dust and dirt. We're going to clean it up and give it a lovely update and make it beautiful. Something that someone will treasure for years. And we've got it all cleaned up. Then I went ahead and stuff sanded it all over. I removed the hardware from all of the drawers and the door. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna prime this with a one, two, three primer, and that is a bonding primer. I don't think I'm gonna have bleed through on this, but if I do, then I'll address it with just some spots of uh, shellac spray, and that will sort that out. And I've given it a sand over just to be sure that there's no dust or anything on it. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put some color on it. So now we have two coats of paint on this. Took the doors off of it um, by just unscrewing the hinges out of the back. And we went ahead and painted the inside of the door. So when the door closes, this is the part that you would see. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some stripes on this. So stick with me. I'm gonna show you how to make sure your stripes don't bleed. So I'm going to move this into the other room and then we'll get to it, okay? So I have brought this in the other room and what I've done is I have measured my side and I have decided that I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out. Um, this part is not that important and it's going to come down to what size you want your stripes and what size tape that you use. So what I've done is I've marked the center width of this piece and I am gonna put my tape in the center and come up. Mark the top as well. And then I'm gonna put my tape down. I've got my taping knife so I can cut a nice clean line on both ends. I am going to start the next one there, right beside of it. It will take quite a bit of tape, but I find that this, for me, is the easiest way for me to get straight lines. You may be different and you may be able to um, take to draw off a straight line but I cannot and I'm just gonna cut that one off put the next one down and pull the center one up and put it over here now don't pull your tape because if you do that it's going to pull it and it's going to make it kind of bow remember don't pull it tight just set it down there right beside making sure just to just to go beside of the one that you've placed. Now you can do this with whatever brand tape you decide. Just be sure before you do this that your paint is absolutely positively dry. Because if not, what's going to happen is when you pull this tape off, you're going to pull your paint with it. And voice of experience here tells you that that will make you quite mad. I'm going to do the same thing going in the opposite direction to complete our stripes. 
Okay, I'm gonna go down here. We're gonna make sure that everything is nice and tight and cut straight. I'm gonna go down here and take this off because I don't want any paint on this bottom part here. So I use that leftover tape for that. Now this is where we want to be sure that all of our tape is down nice and tight. So be sure to go over it with your fingers. Make sure you've got everything all those edges down. Everything's stuck nice. The reason that you get bleed through when you're doing taping is because your paint goes underneath your tape. Best way to stop that, seal it. What I'm gonna do is take my top coat that I would use normally and I'm just going to paint two coats, letting them dry in between over my, my tape. And what that does is if anything's gonna go under that tape, it's gonna be that top coat and that's gonna seal down any little places that your paint might go. And what I'm doing it with is a general finish, this 50-50, um, flat and gloss. When I mix it 50-50, I just, I like the way that that looks. It's not too shiny, it's not too flat. And if I need a flat, then I've already bought flat. And if I need gloss, I've already got gloss, but mixing it 50-50 is the finish that I like. But sometimes you need a gloss and sometimes you need a flat, so. So we're just gonna paint this on, this is the first coat, we're gonna let that dry, and then we're gonna do another coat of this top coat again. And that way I know that the color for my stripes is not gonna bleed through my tape. It's just gonna be the top coat, which I would be using anyway. Now our top coat here has dried. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna paint those stripes on. And I'm gonna do something that I've not done in quite some time. I'm gonna use some silver metallic paint. And let's get started. Again, don't want to use a dry brush or a dry roller, so just give it a little bit of a spritz. Now, I've got my metallic paint just poured onto a paper or a plastic plate just going to offload some of that onto that plate and just start rolling. This was inspired by actually by a um, a bed set that my mother had in her room when she was um, I guess in her late teens early 20s. And it was in my grandparents' house. And after she got married and moved out, she, we would go there for Christmases and so forth. And that was the guest bedroom. And it was, you know, in your grandparents' house, you know, those rooms that you're not allowed to go in when you're really young, say four, five years old. That was one of those rooms and we weren't allowed in there, but at Christmas, what would happen was my uncle and my grandfather were big at pranks on the kids. And at Christmas, they would go outside and throw rocks on the roof and act like Santa was on the roof and we would just freak out. And me and my sister and my cousin would all go running into that guest room jump in the bed that in the room where we weren't allowed to be of course i'm making it and making it untidy and my grandmother was she was fastidious about being tidy and my mother would be mortified that we had done it but 
wasn't our fault. We didn't want Santa to know that we were awake. So we would go in there and we would we would start snoring or fake snoring. And my grandfather just thought it was fantastic. But that bedroom suit was just so, so beautiful. As soon as it's done, you're gonna to wanna to take that tape off. Nice and slow, just ever so slow. Those lines are just so crisp, beautifully crisp. No bleed through at all on these lines. Just beautiful. I am loving this look and we're gonna do some more, so keep watching. We're gonna do a lot more embellishing on this piece, but I'm gonna do the other side and then we'll meet back up. And I thought that to top off this look, a damask stamp would be nice in that same silver that I put on the stripes. So I'm gonna do that now, and I'm gonna show you how I do that. Now I purchased this stamp from Redesign with Prima um, several months ago, and I have used it before, and it is lovely. So what you want is a foam roller, not a flock roller or anything with any kind of texture. You just wanna put, you can use either um, wax or you can use paint. I'm using paint today. You don't wanna use any pressure, but you just wanna put a bit of paint on your stamp all the way across. And you want a nice flat surface um, when you are putting paint on your stamp. You do not want it soaking, so be sure to offload quite a bit of that paint because if you don't, what's gonna happen is it's gonna go into the stamp and you're gonna have a globby mess. I've already fitted this and I know it's gonna fit nicely in between. And I'm just gonna start right down here at the bottom. And I don't want it to touch before I'm ready to put it down, so. Cause just know that once you put it down, that's where it's gonna stamp. And I have this little brazier tool I'm gonna use and I'm just gonna go across it. All right, my stamp, my stamp slipped. Now this is why you always seal pieces before you do anything to them. Because, because this was already sealed, I can just go in wipe that paint back since it's not dried and then I am ready to do it again. Now, if you were using wax, you could do the same thing. All you would need to do is get some mineral spirits, wipe back that colored wax, and then you'd be ready to start again. Always seal your pieces before you put anything on them. That way, if there's any problems, it's pretty easy to sort it right out. All right, we'll let this dry and then start again. Remember, we just don't want it to move. Whatever we do, we do not want it to slip. But if it does and you're top coated, that's okay because you can, if you're using an acrylic paint just go through, a little bit of a spritz of water, wipe it off, do it again. We're gonna pull that off. I know that this is quite hard for you to see, um, but once it dries, it gets darker. Then you'll be able to see the design just a bit better. Now it's time to do something with the hardware for this piece. It had these little tiny handles on them and I thought about replacing them, but I think that they'll go quite well with the design. So, but I don't want them to be that brass color. So I've got out my silver rub and buff 
I've just got very little on my fingers to do this with. And that will let that black that's in those low areas shine through rather than it being just that shiny, shiny silver. And I think that's gonna go quite nicely. And this will not rub off on your hands when you, once it's on and it sets, it sets nicely. Um, if you've never used it before, I absolutely recommend it for hardware. It will transform hardware to the color that you want. You can go ahead and top coat over it. It works fine. I've done that as well. I usually do top coat over them, but you don't have to. So this is something that you could do, you know, on handles that you have at home that you think, oh, you know what, I wish I would have done that in gold, silver, brass, purple. They have all kinds of colors. So check them out. We'll put a link in the description for this, of course. But my rub and buff handles. They look good. They're going to be perfect on this piece, I think. After cleaning these drawers, I'm still finding stains in them. It's just stains from jewelry. I decided that I'm going to paint the fabric that's in it to match the colors that I want. So let's get started with that. The first thing that you do is take a chalk paint. This is a chalk paint that I painted this piece with and I have watered it down. If you look, that is very thin, very thin. You want to have it nice and watery and enough to do what you need to do. Whether it be that you are painting a chair or a couch or anything that, any fabric that you want to paint, this process is the same. Take your mister bottle and mist down your fabric that you're going to be painting. And take your paint and just start painting it. It's that simple. It's going to go on thin. This will take two coats. Depending on the color of fabric you're using, it may take more, it may take less, but um, for this, I know it's going to take two coats, so that's what we'll be doing. You're going to want to let it dry very well. If it is summertime, you can put it out in the sun and let it dry. Don't let it stay out too long. You don't want to mess up your paint job on your piece if you've already painted it. Um, but... This is how we will do it. I have painted chairs, fabric chairs, um, quite a few of those. And when you get done and the fabric is a little stiff, just take a sanding pad. I like to use a pretty well used 220 um, and then sand down the fabric and it will be just so soft again and the color will be changed. I've painted a chair before. If you'd like to see that video, we'll link it below. All right, now that we've got this painted, we've got it all sanded and soft. What we're going to do is we're going to take that same stamp that we used on the drawer fronts and we're going to put it on the inside of the doors. I thought that might be a nice little touch since I've already got everything taken apart and ready to go. So we're going to do that now, just lining it up at the bottom, trying to be sure that we get it nice and even. Just go in, press down. The exact same way we did the drawer fronts. I think it'll just be a nice little look. Kind of tie everything together nicely. 
can see just the faintness of it. Okay, so we've got this piece all completed now. I'm very pleased with it. It really does look just like that fabric on my mother's bedroom set as a teenager. It has the lovely damask on the front that I've stamped on there. Also stamp that inside the doors on the fabric. Looks lovely. Great jewelry box. Nice silver details around the edges. Also did those same silver details above the drawers. I think it just brings the piece together. It's a lovely mirror inside, just so you can check that jewelry and it just folds back down inside. I think somebody's gonna be very happy with it. If you enjoy the content, please remember hit that like button and please remember to subscribe. It really does help for our subscriber count to go up. It helps us move up in that algorithm. So help support us. On the sides, we did a nice stripe and those turned out spectacular. Um, they're very clean and hopefully you too have learned how to do stripes without any bleed through at all.